Welcome again to Online Bible Study with Pastor Mapson. Delighted that you are able to join us this evening uh, for our Bible study. And um, this is a wonderful season to study the Word of God, which is the beginning of the Advent season, which I will uh, mention in just a few moments. But I do want to remind us of some things. And first is that the persons who are on our Bible study line, uh, if you will mute your phones, it will make it easier for others on the line to hear. And also for you to keep up with us on all of our social media platforms. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube and Insta uh, you can follow us rather on Twitter and Instagram, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now we've had been having some problems uh, with our YouTube channel for uh, about a week now, and until that um, uh, problem is uh, solved, we ask that if you know persons who are who are trying to to uh, tune in on YouTube to let them know that, and, but they can follow us on, um, um, on, on, um, on Facebook Live. Also, uh, three ways to give. Uh, you may give through our Easy Tithe app. You may mail in your tithes and your offerings to the church, or you can drop them by, as many of you do weekly, or have someone to do so. Also, uh, you can continue to join us on Thursday evenings for Throwback Thursday. Uh, of course, we did not have Throwback Thursday last Thursday because of Thanksgiving, but it will resume this coming Thursday. And on Sunday evenings, um, we want you to join in with uh, Dr. Q in Digging Deeper which is an opportunity for you to join in on uh, Zoom and uh, discuss uh, what the sermon meant to you and how you were helped by it and just uh, a general conversation about the sermon. Last Sunday, we were blessed, um, and, I, and I certainly want to take this opportunity to thank such a a wonderful and uh, caring and giving congregation uh, as we celebrated 33 years of togetherness. I was thinking about uh, those 33 years in the in the context of uh, um, all of the pastors of Monumental since uh, our founding in 1826, and. Uh, I am, the, of course, for several years now, I've been the second longest serving pastor. Only one is ahead of me, and that is the uh, legendary Dr. Moses Marquette P. Sr., who uh, served the congregation for 44 years. Uh, and, and, and in thinking about that, um, the, the last... You've, you've, you've had two pastors in the last 75 years, 75 years, three quarters of a century uh, with just two pastors. And I think that uh, that is a remarkable um, uh, credit to you in terms of, uh, of pastors who, who come to Monumental, uh, come to stay. And... Uh, but but I'm grateful. My family's grateful for your outpouring of of love throughout the month. Uh, so many cards you've sent and and uh, gener generous gifts inside the cards and outside and and for all of your phone calls and texts and expressions, I am truly grateful and and uh, how blessed we were to have. Uh, my pastor, and I say that um, because, uh, as I mentioned Sunday, I have two pastors, and my father uh, went on to be with the Lord 13 years ago. I asked uh, Dr. William Shaw to um, 
fill that role uh, because I believe that whatever pastor's age, every pastor needs a pastor. Um, and I've asked him to do that. And, and I look to him and lean to him uh, for um, encouragement and conversation about ministry and about life. But my other pastor is, is the Reverend Dr. Ralph Branch, who succeeded my father and is the pastor of, of uh, our home church, Mount Calvary in Newark, and uh, asked him to bring the message. And isn't technology wonderful? My, my God, it, he was able to um, record uh, his sermon sometime last week and preach like his church was packed. Uh, and then it was played for us on Sunday. Uh, and I'll thank our media team with uh, Jesse in leadership of that for uh, making it a very seamless worship service. And uh, we certainly were blessed and, and thank him for his, uh, for, he's my little, little brother. And thank him for blessing us on, on Sunday. Um, I also want to um, make uh, a few announcements, a couple of announcements before we get into our, our Bible study. Um, I want us to pray for our sick and shut in. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, disadvantages of, of uh, the the state that we're in now is um, sometimes we 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 lose uh, sight of our shut-ins and and um, when we had when we were in worship and had our bulletins we we could see the list of of our shut-ins um, and 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 many of you uh, make made calls to them and you sent cards and remembered them. Um, but they're still there and still in need of that. And of course, even though we have no printed programs that you can see, uh, you can always call the church office and find out who they are and uh, send them a card for Christmas and, and tell them you're a member of Monumental. They don't have to know you. I've had so many from time to time of our seniors and persons who are shut in say, I, I received a card or cards from persons in the church, and, and they would say, I don't, I don't believe I know who that is. Um, and, and it brought a smile to their faces. Uh, and so we want to continue to be as much the church now as we can be under, under these circumstances. But I got a call uh, this afternoon from uh, Sister Donalda. Donalda Moss is a very uh, dedicated uh, administrative assistant, at least. Uh, she's been temporary now for almost two years. <laughs> but uh, her sister had a massive uh, stroke in Maryland, and so she was getting in her car to drive to Maryland. We want to be in prayer for her, for her sister, and for her family, and others among us uh, who are going through uh, period of sickness, and particularly uh, also those who are, have tested positive for COVID-19. And we pray that your symptoms may be mild and that you are on the road to recovery. There is uh, hope on the horizon with uh, several pharmaceutical companies who, who are coming out with, uh, uh, with um, vaccines for COVID-19. Uh, and we shouldn't. We should certainly be hopeful because there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but but while we're being hopeful, we also need to be very cautious and very mindful of the fact that just because uh, a vaccine will be rolled out shortly, uh, it could be several months before uh, before we we get the vaccine. And of course, there's always the issue of whether or not uh, uh, persons who, uh, who, who are able or, 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 or have access to it will want to get it. So there's some issues still ahead and challenges 
in terms of that, but that, that could be months away. Um, and we don't want to let our guards down now um, because the, the last thing we need to do is, is to, to as, as the saying, biblical saying, uh, woe to those who are at ease in Zion. When we relax and, and uh, become complacent, uh, then we open ourselves uh, to even greater danger. Uh, listen, you need you know you need to keep your grandchildren away from your house. Uh, you need to guard your own space uh, and remember that those of us who are of a certain age are far more vulnerable um, and and more likely to have uh, s severe symptoms and more likely to die. Than, uh, than younger people, even though they're subject to death and symptoms as well. And so we want to be very diligent now and uh, live, live to celebrate another Thanksgiving and another Christmas because God willing, if we live, there'll, there'll be another one on, on the way. I also want to um, mention, uh, as I alluded to earlier, and Sunday, that this is the season of Advent. And uh, the Advent season consists of four Sundays uh, leading to Christmas when the, the, the Christian church uh, uh, prepares for the coming of the Messiah, for the coming of Jesus, for the birth of Jesus. And it is it is a time that while even while we engage in um, the, uh, activities surrounding Christmas that I think are wonderful, I love I love the Christmas uh, drama of Christmas and the music and the decorations. But at at the same time, there for for believers, there is a deeper understanding of what's going on, and. The liturgical calendar uh, is a way of reminding Christians and believers that God has his own calendar. God uh, is doing God's own work throughout the year. We have as a nation secular holidays, Memorial Day, um, July 4th, in the, which is Independence Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day. Um, and, and those are times when, when we as a nation celebrate uh, who we are. But, but believers also celebrate who we are. And we have seasons like Advent and Pentecost and Epiphany and Lent and uh, Holy Week and Easter Sunday, which is a way of celebrating God's activity in the world and in our lives. And so Advent is a wonderful time for us to begin. Uh, last Sunday was the first Sunday in Advent, and the, each there's a, ca a, a, a candle that is lit for each of the four Sundays, uh, and the first uh, candle lit is the candle called Hope. And as I mentioned on Sunday, the, the hope represents uh, the hope of the prophets of the Old Testament who, um, who hoped for a deliverer and a Messiah, which, which was, as we know, Jesus the Christ. And so we, we want to acknowledge the season and, and in the midst of all that's going on around us, God is getting ready to do something um, and we know what he's going to do in Bethlehem. And then finally, um, I want to uh, mention that uh, beginning on, as we are winding down tonight, this will be our last Bible study for the topic that we've been studying for several months now, which is faith. Uh, and beginning on next uh, Tuesday, we're going to begin studying the book of Revelation. Revelation, as you know, is the last book in the Bible. Uh, and we're going to we're going to talk about the meaning of the book of Revelation. Uh, we're going to we're going to talk about why the book of Revelation is such a hard book uh, and a challenging book to study. Um, but then again, you know, 
every book in the Bible is a challenge to study. And so Revelation is no different. The only difference is in some of the signs and symbols and those kind of things that sometimes uh, are problematic for us. And we've heard so much stuff about Revelation and we, we're catching it from all sides over the years about its meaning. And uh, some say it's a scary book and, and uh, a book of, of gloom and doom and all of these 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 things and anim, uh, uh, symbols and and beasts and all you know coming to the front in the book of Revelation and so we're gonna we're gonna look at that and we're gonna we're gonna also ask the question what does Revelation mean today because when whenever we study the Bible and we've been doing this all along every every book that we study the the question is always now what what is what is the the relevance? Uh, because the truth of the matter is already relevant. Uh, what we must do then is to dig around and in the relevance, under the relevance, and pull out uh, messages and meaning for us here. And uh, you know, those who lived uh, when the Book of Revelation was written uh, knew nothing about airplanes and COVID nineteen. And so uh, we have to ask the question, what is God saying to us today uh, through this, this ancient book that was, uh, was written 2,000 years ago? So we will begin that study on, uh, uh, we, we will begin that study on, uh, on next, um, next Tuesday. All right, now I have a final, um, I have a final quote that I want to leave with you. And guess who it's from? It's not me. It's, uh, it's well, I'm going to read the quote and then tell you who it is, it is from because many of you will uh, know, know the name. Faith and, and, and it's, it's a woman and she's, she's talking about faith and prayer in this quote. And she says that faith and prayer are the vitamins of the soul and persons cannot live in health without them. Faith and prayer are the vitamins of the soul. What a, what a wonderful analogy. The vitamins of the soul person cannot live in health without them and uh, that quote is by Mahalia Jackson Mahalia Jackson the, uh, well Aretha's the queen of soul well Mahalia Jackson's the queen of religious soul or something she is the, she's the real queen uh, the queen of gospel music and one of the uh, really one of the one of the founders along with Thomas Dorsey of what we call gospel music faith and prayer are the vitamins of the soul man cannot live or, or at least persons cannot live in health without them and who can who can forget her singing in the upper room and I could go, there's a song to I could go on and on and on and on, which I, which I will not, which I will not do. So let's, um, uh, uh, oh, I see, uh, not, I don't see, but I see some names and I'm going to, I see some names. I'm going to, I'm going to try to, uh, um. Uh, Catherine Means Askew. Yeah. A man is watching George McGinnis. George McGinnis was a fine member of Monumental uh, until he retired and moved, I, I guess, South Carolina, I want to say. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm, I'm right on that. Brother McGinnis is uh, 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 yet faithful, even though from afar he's, he uh, remains uh, in contact through our social media with us all the time. 
Yvonne McLeod, if, if that is the yeah. Yvonne McLeod mm -hmm. that I knew, mm -hmm. can it be? Yes, it is. Yvonne McLeod was a member of my first church, uh, Union Baptist in Elizabeth, and was my, we call them secretaries then. You know, now we got to, we call them administrative assistants. She was uh, my secretary, secretary for the church, um, back in my early years. Where is she? She's in Virginia. In Virginia. Yvonne McLeod. My God, I remember when, when um, her son was born, was, uh, little Nate. I guess he's big Nate now. Maybe, maybe with children himself, who knows, but uh, thank you, Tisha. God bless you, and I better, I better cool it with the names right. Tisha, yes, about candles. Oh yeah, about the candles. Well, mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I, I, there, there are, um, and and if you are of a liturgical tradition, uh, certainly a Roman Catholic or Episcopalian, um, you know you you know that about the candles and about. Uh, the, the candle for each week is of a different color and all of that, as well as a different meaning. And I'll say a little bit more about that on um, on um, on next next Tuesday. But I think the liturgical uh, uh, churches uh, have something to teach us as Protestants, as Baptists in particular, because we usually don't don't pay attention to things like that uh, colors and candles and uh, but there's wonderful symbolism and visual symbols of of it that have very deep meaning for Christians um, and so um, we, we're going to talk more about that during during the Lenten season now um, well, how do we end this? Uh, you, do you remember how it started? It started uh, several months ago, um, and and it really started uh, uh, before COVID hit, and we were studying in, in Bible study on Tuesday evenings at the church. Um, love, that was the that's that was the topic, and we looked at First uh, Corinthians thirteen. Uh, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and then that final verse in um, in chapter thirteen. Now abideth these three. Remember, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And uh, and we got to f got on faith, and and stayed there. <laughs> I mean, we 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 we've, we've been we've been on, on talking about faith for months. I want us. I want to say maybe since May, um, but it's been a long time. What a rich um, discussion, though. Not discussion because you can't talk to me, but what a rich journey uh, we've been able to, to, to go on in, in, in trying to understand the meaning of faith. And this, and, and that led us to the 15th chapter of um, of Hebrews, 11th chapter of Hebrews, which is where we really, we, we got there and we looked like we parked there for, for several months in the 11th chapter. And so, um, again, I, I think, I think that that what this chapter is about as, as we conclude today is, is about people who overcame great difficulties because of their faith. Very simple. They, they, they were able to overcome through faith or by faith. And recall, if we look through the 11th chapter of, of Hebrews, there's always a by faith, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham by faith, David and Moses and Enoch and and Joshua and and all of the rest by faith. Uh, that's the the preface for their stories, and then we saw how 
the writer of Hebrews tells us something about a person's faith that qualifies them to be listed by the writer of Hebrews. So it's the writer of Hebrews list. He's looking for people of faith and he sees all of these persons, men and some women, of, of great faith. Um, and then when he, when he finishes now, you know, he, he, he goes through so many of them and tells us sometimes in one verse or sometimes in several verses about each one of them. And then he gets to the point where he's saying, my time is, my time is running out and I don't have time to tell you about the rest of them. And then he gives us six more and we've been filling in the blanks with them the last uh, few weeks uh, like David and Samuel and the four judges, right? Jephthah, who else? Gideon, um, Samson, see? And so uh, then, then, you know, but he doesn't stop there because there's, there's more to the chapter than that. But what I want to emphasize is the fact that what he's saying is that this is just a sample. You know, he, he's not saying these are all of the persons in the Old Testament who are worthy to be listed. You know, he just ran out of time. <laughs> and he's saying there's, there's more. Um, and, and, and what we need to see in this, this more is that for the most part, these are what ordinary, average people, and and that's to to me that's uh, one of the highlights of this chapter. That you you don't have to you know be, you don't have to have some special you know we want we want to use language language today anointing you know. I'm not sure what that means all the time, but we, you don't have to have any kind of special anointing. Um, you don't have to have necessarily any special educational achievements. Um, just if you look at the list, of course we have, we have uh, several persons who we would say stand out because of 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 the great greater work they did for God, uh, certainly standouts would be uh, Abraham, certainly Moses, uh, David, who is given a, a a line here. But if you look at the rest of the list, who else? I, I think most of us di didn't even know, uh, and certainly if we knew some of the names, we didn't know much about them. Why? Because they were just ordinary people, just average persons uh, living their lives, and in, they encounter a God who, who challenges them to do some great work and, and, and to do it through faith. And so we, 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 we come across people here whose names are not familiar names, but the, the lesson is that God can use each one of us. We're, we're just ordinary, average people. Um, and, I, and I say that because that's, that's, really, that's really who we are, just, uh, just regular people. And, and God can do some great, extraordinary things is what I, the way I've heard it. With he knew some extraordinary things with ordinary people. It's just, just, um, it's just amazing if if a person is willing to give of himself or herself in the service of God and to be obedient, because the key here also is obedience. These these were per if they were not obedient, we we wouldn't be calling their names. We they their names wouldn't be on, in this list. We we would we would never have heard of 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 Enoch and and Noah and Abraham none of them uh, 
Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Rahab, Sarah, none of them, uh, if, if they had not been obedient and stepped out on faith, uh, and, and we've had many quotes on faith during the last few months, uh, stepping in the dark, in the darkness, not being able to see. What I, I love the, the quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which just stays with me all the time. Faith is taking one step even when you can't see the whole staircase. Faith is taking one step even though you can't see the whole staircase. That's, that's what faith is, and that's what these persons have done, and that's what we can do, see, that's that's exactly what we can do, um, and and it, it it's not just that it's not just for ordained preachers and pastors or people in in the public domain. It's you. It's me. It's it's any one of us uh, has the potential of being on this list when we are uh, when we when we when we. When we give ourselves to, to God, there's a there's an old um, BTU Baptist Training Union song we used to sing as children. Give of your best to the Master. Yeah. See, that's all that's all God wants. He wants wants us. He wants our best, and He can use that. And and so this this chapter is about people. Uh, of no great claim to fame, but people who were, who were obedient. They were average persons called into service, and they said, "Yes, Lord." That's that's what they did. Said, "Yes, Lord." And also, the other striking thing about it is they were flawed heroes. And I I hesitate to to use the word hero because I think the word hero, especially in our culture in in recent years, has been. Um, has been diminished and, and, and misused and misapplied. But, but these were heroes. These, we, we talk about heroes in, in the armed forces, fine. We talk about heroes, uh, firefighters who run into buildings and save lives, and God bless them. The, the, but these, these are heroes. Never, never fired any weapons. Never ran into a building. Never uh, stopped a bullet that was meant for somebody. Never uh, 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 stopped a, uh, uh, a crime. You know, these persons are heroes, and we too can be uh, when we give ourselves unto unto God. So there, there are a couple of things uh, in a couple of. Uh, verses in the 11th chapter of Hebrews that I think can really bring all of this together. Um, and it's, it's kind of uh, bittersweet to come to, to the end of, of, of this uh, topic because of, of how essential faith is uh, to the Christian life. And you think about uh, all of the church, a church can do. Um, and we have to look at our own history. Um, the faith that, that, that people had a generation ago to, to leave where they were and, and buy another facility, another church building. And, and they didn't have much, um, to take that step, and now, because you, you do know once you do that, you you also got a mortgage. You're like, like you buying a house, you know, you go, <laughs> and so here, here are these people who have been in one building for over 100 years, and they say God wants, wants more from us, God wants to take us somewhere, and this building is not adequate for our future. That's what they said. Um, and, and they took that leap of faith and they did what they need and they did what they needed to do and they sacrificed and they bought the, the building at 50th and Locust with a mortgage, <laughs> see, see, cause it, it would have been easy just to stay put, 
uh, because some people don't want a responsibility. You know, and they don't want to go anywhere. So that's faith, see. So we have to find ways to not only look at the faith in, in the Bible and the faith of these, these heroes of faith, but then what are the acts of faith in our own lives, in our own communities, uh, the faith of our mothers and our fathers? How many of them relocated uh, from the South, the grandparents for, for some of you, re relocated from the South for a better life and, and uh, to raise a family in a better environment away from uh, segregation in the South and, and Jim Crow? These are all acts of faith. See, and we need to celebrate uh, these the biblical characters and their faith, but they also but then to also celebrate persons uh, of our own in our own families and in our own community uh, who also ex have exemplified acts of faith. But let me let me let's go to uh, Hebrews 11, 11th chapter and the eighth verse, because this, the, the two, three verses that, that kind of capture uh, the spirit of, of, of the months that we have shared talking about faith. Now remember the, the two key verses we have placed before us just about every week, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, which is in the uh, first verse, and then in the sixth verse, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those we've already stated really capture what the author is getting at, because that's that's the author's theme of the chapter. And he's he's now saying now this is this is uh, how I see faith. This is my definition of faith. And now I'm going to show you all of these people who fit the definition. See. So, so those are key verses, but there's, there's some other significant verses here, um, and one is verse 8, verse 8, by faith Abraham, when called to go to a place um, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he's going, right? Didn't know, That's the key right there. The, the key is not... Um, called to a place he would later receive inheritance of it, even though he did not know where he was going is, is key to this. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign land and lived in tents as did Isaac. For, and this is it. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose, built, whose architect and builder is God. Looking for something uh, and and being directed by God, looking, you know, when we stop looking, we stop living, right? We we should we we're always looking. Um, what is God doing? Where where is God leading? Just we're always looking ahead. I think. Sometimes we hinder ourselves when we when we're always looking back. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to look back to stuff that's already settled and done. I mean, maybe not settled, <laughs> but it's done. Can't can't go back and undo. Um, you know, I I've told this story before that I heard from my uh, beloved president, uh, Dr. Benjamin Mays. Talked about a little boy um, who had taken a piece of wood and he took some nails and he hammered those nails into into the, into the wood and he took it to his father and his father reprimanded him for it. Said, well, you know, why why are you doing this? You messed up. Uh, 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 you know, you messed up this 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 piece of wood by putting nails and in it and holes in it. And then the father said, go, go take out the nails. And the boy went and pulled the nails out. And then he brought the board back 
and he started crying and the father said why are you crying you you did what i told you to do and you you took out the nails the little boy said yeah daddy but the holes are still there See? you you can't can't take out the holes cover them up but they're still there uh so so faith is not looking back uh, because when we look back, we're going to, we're going to see hurts and bruises and, uh, a, a whole lot of stuff. And, and, and here is Abraham and these people of faith. They're always looking forward. You never see any of them going back or revisiting, trying to revisit the past. God is always saying, I want you to do this. He, he's pulling them forward to do some great work. And that's what he does for us as well. And, and so this is a key verse because it caps, cap, uh, 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 captures, I think, what faith is all about, and, and especially in terms of, of, um, of the writer's understanding. He's looking forward, looking forward, looking forward to a city, the city, with foundations who built, whose architect and built is God. And the other amazing thing about Abraham was he was a hundred years old. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't 18 or 25. He's a hundred years old. There is, there is work for, for the elderly to do. Sometimes we want to sit on God and retire from God. Like we retire from a job. We, God never told us to retire from serving him. And so, uh, it's, it's an opportunity, I think, in retirement to say now, what more can I do for God that I could not do before? You know, and to, and to look look for uh, a, a purpose and meaning in life beyond uh, the years, beyond the retirement years, uh, because the, the truth of the matter is, it was God who blessed us to live, blessed us those of you who are retired, bless you to live to retirement. Think about all the people who didn't live that long or, or were right on the verge of retiring or they retired and within, you know, within days or, or a year or two, they were gone. Uh, so, so the opportunity is there. So that's a very, that's a very key verse. And the other key verses are um, verses 39 and 40. Verses 39 and 40. But before we get to those verses, um, he, he has this whole section um, beginning with verse 32. Let's start there. Let's start at 32. Because remember now, he said now, I don't have time to tell you all about uh, the, the, some, some more. Because the, the, you know, the list is, he didn't exhaust the list. He said, I, I didn't have time to tell you about uh, uh, Gideon and Jephthah and David and Samuel. And, and, and then he says, and the prophets, verse 32, and the prophets, in verse 33, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. See, so that's a reference, and we, we, so we have to try to figure out who's, who is the writer talking about since he doesn't name names at this point? And so when he says the prophets, then obviously uh, he's talking about the prophets of Israel. He's talking about the Isaiahs and the Micahs and the Habakkuks and the Zephaniahs and the Hoseas. He's talking about them when he says they conquered kingdoms and administered justice. And he's simply saying the uh, saying that uh, God's word spoken through the prophet outlived the kingdoms. And so all of those kingdoms um, that rose up against God and God's people, they all turned to dust, uh, whether it was Egypt or uh, Assyria or Babylon, all of them, he's saying, um, and gained what was promised. And then he, he says, who shut the mouths of lions. So now we have to try to figure out, well, what, what in the Bible, what reference could there be in the Bible to uh, shutting the mouths of lions? And of course, what, what is it we think of? 
Daniel. Daniel in the lion's den. And what did God do? God shut the mouths of lions. So he doesn't name Daniel, but perhaps the reference is to, to Daniel. So I want to just pull out a few more of these uh, as he ends the chapter. Uh, verse 34, quench the fire, quench the, the fury of the flames. And of course, that might refer to what, what we call in the black church, the three Hebrew boys, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? And remember that they were, what, in the fiery furnace, and God uh, delivered them, you know, all, because of their uh, stand with God, because of their refusal to bow to uh, any other king, any other God, they were thrown into a, a furnace that was that was heated seven times hotter than usual, it, it says, in the book of Daniel. And so it could be a reference to them and, and on and on and escape the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength. Well, whose weakness was turned to strength? We just studied uh, uh, one of the judges, Samson. Remember when he lost his strength and became weak uh, after his hair was cut off. But then he asked the Lord to give him strength one more time. Okay. So that could be a reference to to, to Samson, when, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and and uh, rooted, routed rather foreign armies. And then verse 35, women received back their dead raised to life again. Then we have to ask ourselves, uh, could he be referring to um, uh, the, the woman of Zarephath or um, um, the Shunammite woman? Remember the Shunammite woman who's, uh, you know, the prophets, you know, told her she was going to have a son in a year's time. She had the son, then the son fell ill and uh and she sent for the prophet you know and and he brings her back to life so maybe that's a reference women's received back their dead raised to life again others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection some faced jeers and flogging while still others were chained and put in prison think about all of the persons who suffered for the sake of of christ they were a stone. Maybe, maybe he's talking about Stephen. Mm -hmm. They were sawed in two because mm -hmm. uh, one of the methods of death for Christians was uh, at, at, at one point in uh, early Christian history, they were thrown into, uh, thrown to the lions mm -hmm. because of, of their refusal to renounce Christ. Mm -hmm. No. Um, and, and others would, were sawed in two. No. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. All for Christ. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. That's this is this this is these are These are the people whose names we don't know for the most part. And, and the writer is saying they too are on the list, see? And the list would not be complete without them. And, and the good news is that if, if, if we don't know who they were, God does. See, that's, that's, that's the most important thing. And then we come to the last two uh, verses of this, again, this, this chapter 11 of Hebrews must be one of the greatest chapters in, in, in the whole Bible, must be. Uh, always look at how a chapter begins and how it ends. Let's, let's look at how chapter 11 ends because 
the ending is also going to lead us into the next chapter. And that's when I will close. So chap so verse 39. Let's read read together. These were all commended for their faith. These were all commended for their faith. So now what is he talking about? Who are the these he's talking about? He's talking about all of the persons that he just talked about. He's talking about Abraham, Moses, Rahab, David, Samuel. He said he's saying these were all commended. You know, it, they they were uh, they were singled out for their faith because faith again there's there's faith written on every in every verse in this chapter faith 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 this is what faith is he said I'm, he's saying even if even if I didn't def, couldn't define it I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the lives of people because Faith has hands and feet. See, he says these were all commended for their faith. Yet, and here, here is, you know, this this yet, you know, none of them received what had been promised. None of them. And if we stop there, we might say, that's a shame. That, that is a shame. They did, they did all of this for God. They sacrificed for God. Uh, some lost their lives for God. Some became destitute for God. Sawed in two. Killed with, a, with the sword. Um... But none of them received what had been promised. And, and if, if we stop there, uh, we're going to miss something of, of much greater value. None of them received the promise. Why? God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. And there it is. Maybe the most important uh, of all of the verses in the eleventh in the eleventh chapter. So why didn't why didn't all these folk that he's told us about receive the promise after all they did? Be because God has fixed it so that the they can't receive the promise until we all see it together. The, the promise cannot be fulfilled until we all and so and so and so we wonder sometimes about the the Old Testament personalities. And we and we say, well, they didn't know Jesus and they weren't saved. No, don't don't first of all we 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 um we're 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 treading on thin ice when we decide who can be saved. Because that's not so. See, they came before Christ, but when Christ came, the promise to them was fulfilled in Christ. See, and so all of them, according to the right of Hebrews, pointed to the coming of Christ, pointed to Christ, even though they lived hundreds of and maybe a thousand years before Christ was even born. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us, in other words, with Abraham and me and you, with Joshua and Moses and me and you, together, only together with us, would they be made perfect? And so, and, and so the perfection of their lives 
did not come during their lives. The perfection came with the coming of Jesus Christ. And so that all of us together uh, can enjoy the precious promises that God has made. And we couldn't do that without these who are on the list, see. See, and we, we're standing on the shoulders of these great biblical heroes who came before us because they're the ones that have given us ex the examples of, of what it means to be faithful. We, we wouldn't know what it meant to be faithful without, uh, with, without knowing uh, what faith meant to them, see. Oh, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's something to shout about. Uh -huh. <laughs> it really is that that even our labor is is not complete. Um, there there is there is something beyond our lives that 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 will be completed after our lifetime. That that it is it is in Christ Jesus that. All of life and all of history are brought together, uh, and and that is the moment when the the promise is made is made complete because Jesus Christ uh, has come and He is our Savior. Now, in closing, um, um, remember I've said many times that chapter designations in the Bible and verse designations are more recent. Um, additions, um, but in the original languages there were no, there was no chapter 11, 12, 13. It, it was just a flowing of the text without a chapter number. Um, it didn't have things like uh, headings, chapter headings, and no verses. Uh, Greek and Hebrew just, it just flowed. And so you have to imagine that there is no 12 here and let the end of chapter 11 flow into chapter 12. And so let's start it at verse 39 of chapter 11 and see how it goes as we wind it down. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw up everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So you see how it, see how it flows. Therefore, in other words, listen, we got we got this great cloud of witnesses in chapter eleven. We've got Moses and Abraham and Enoch and Noah and and on down the line. We got Rahab. We've got uh, Jephthah. We've got Isaac and Jacob and Sarah. We. Therefore, since we are surrounded by them, great cloud of witnesses, they, they've come before us and they, they, bear, they bear witness to the faithfulness of God. See, that, that's what they bear witness to, that God, they will tell you if they were brought to the witness stand that God is a faithful God. That even, and I say it all the time, what? Even when we're not faithful to God, God is always faithful to us. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And so they were commended. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, feel like preaching now. Old preacher said, feel my, feel my help coming. See? Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run. Why? Because they ran. 
and and so we've got to you you've seen the olympics where uh the the, the runner is waiting for to, for the handoff of the baton and i you know i've seen such heartbreak when when one of them drops the baton and it and and it's over for them but here here we are waiting to receive the baton and then we receive the baton from those who have persevered fought a good fight and they they bear witnesses to witness to the faithfulness of God and now they hand us the baton now are, are we going to drop it see are we going to carry it further until we run our course and then someone there is waiting to take it from from us my god my god listen uh okay so i gotta read chapter uh, uh verse 2 of chapter 12. let us fix our eyes on jesus the author and i like the, the king james would say the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy set before him listen to this endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of god consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that listen you will not grow weary and lose heart yeah i'm not gonna grow weary and lose heart we get tired i get tired but I'm not gonna grow weary and lose heart I'm, I'm we may grow weary but we will not lose heart why? Because we, we've been given the baton, we've been handed the baton, and we have this great cloud of witnesses urging us on. And then we can add, you know what, what's wonderful about the list is, just like it's an unfinished list for the writer of Hebrews, it's unfinished for us. Because we, we, we can add some there. You, you have a grandmother you, you want to add to that list? Or a sainted father or mother or... Or grandmother, or sister, or aunt, um, because though th th we have a cloud of witnesses. See? Well, God bless you, and uh, we are we are have concluded our study of faith and of eleventh uh, chapter of Hebrews, and uh, on next. Tuesday, as I mentioned, we will begin an exciting, what I hope to be, and I'm, I'm excited already, I'm, I'm ready, uh, exciting journey through the book of Revelation. And I want, I want us to pray, I want you to pray, um, pray always for my strength, but also pray for understanding, you know, that, that uh, for, my, for, the clarity of your teacher, pray that your teacher can be, will be clear, uh, and so that you will understand, and and also pray that we might receive the word because uh, the shame is that if we if we know a whole lot of Bible, we study God's word, but then we never apply it to our lives, and so Jesus reminds us: be ye not only hearers of the word but doers of the word as well. God bless you. And uh, we will be together hopefully Sunday, but certainly next Tuesday for our Bible study. Be safe and be sensible.